everybody, it's Eugene here and welcome to Click3D. This is the program where we talk about all things 3D. We talk about software, we talk about hardware, we talk about techniques, we run a bunch of exercises, and every now and then we even get to speak to some pretty interesting people in the 3D community. Today what I'm going to be doing is a 3D model of this tire and winter is over, the weather is looking really good outside and I need to switch my tires back to my all seasons and remove my winter tires. And a few weeks ago I was at the Rex conference in Orlando and I was talking to some people and there are actually a number of people that are interested in photographing and creating models of tires. And that could be because maybe there's some markings or specific damage on a tire, whether it's on the tread or on the rim, that may be important. So what I thought I would do today is create a full 3D model of this tire here and I'm going to do it with photogrammetry. Now, if I had to decide, you know, what kinds of things uh, or what kind of technologies I would use for something like this, you really have two choices. One is a structured light scanner and the other one is photogrammetry. And it really all depends on the price tag, okay, how much you're willing to invest and also uh, what kind of accuracy you need. And of course, the scale of the object is important too. You can't use a scanner that's meant for a very, very tiny you know, area and then try to map out something that's, you know, 20 meters big. So you have to think about what it is that you're gonna need. I like photogrammetry, we're gonna use that, and we're gonna try and reconstruct some of the details of the tire tread, but like I said, in order to getting both sides. So, what we're gonna do is, uh, let's talk about just the tire itself. So right off the bat, you've got black, dark rubber, and then you've got this shiny silver rim. So we sort of have a conflict there, and if I'm gonna be photographing this, I gotta be careful to ensure that I'm not exposing for just the dark part or just the light part, because then I'm gonna get either a, a overexposed or underexposed image, so I have to be careful there. Um, I could use a flash if I needed to, and actually there's a little uh, a macro uh, ring flash that uh, I've picked up. It's pretty inexpensive. Uh, this one is, it says KNF uh, Concept or something like that, KF150. You can get these on Amazon. They're not that expensive. And basically what happens here is uh, you stick this part here into the hot shoe and then this little ring sits over the lens like that. And then, you know, you take your photos and you basically get a nice, uh, good illumination flash from here. But I don't think I'm gonna need to do that. I think I have enough lighting here, so I'm not gonna bother with this. But this could be helpful in cases where you're getting a lot of shadows. If you're working outdoors, you get strong sunlight with, you know, part of the vehicle might be covering part of the tire and you wanna illuminate or get some better lighting in between the tire treads. So that's kind of important. The other thing is, in order to solve this problem with, you know, a dark uh, tire, I've actually sprayed this with some A-sub spray. So there's, there's three different ones here. I may as well bust them out. And I've done a video on these ones before, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these. But basically the white is a spray coating that does not sublimate, so it doesn't disappear after a while. The blue disappears and the orange disappears. There's even a green, which is a liquid. You can put it into your own sprayer. But um, just a, a note here, the blue and the orange uh, you want to be careful with these when it's really hot outside because it, it, it just doesn't stick around. If there's a high temperature, if the vehicle is really hot, um, you're just going to waste your money. So you're better off using the, the stuff that you can wash off. So you'll note here that around here I've sort of sprayed uh, the tire and the tread and there's like little features in here and little uh, pieces of uh, pebbles and stones and things like that. And even on the top surface here, I've sprayed a little bit inside the rim and that's because uh, up on the insides here, it was a little dark and dirty. So um, I'm just worried that I'm, I'm not gonna bring out enough of the, uh, of the texture and stuff. So doing it this way, I'm bringing out some things and I'm also eliminating part of the shine. So I can see there's a little bit of shine on the logo here in the center. So all I gotta do, give that a shake, just give it a little spray and that's it. I don't even need that much. It'll just break up the shine a little bit. It's, it'll turn white and it'll be absolutely fine. So in terms of the tire, I've already treated it and you'll note that it's on a kind of stool. So this is like an old chair that the, uh, the upholstery just got really bad. So I removed it, put a block of wood on and I've elevated this with some blocks of wood and such. 
So this is a little bit higher, it's easier to photograph, it's not close to the ground, but it allows me to turn this into a kind of turntable. So the plan here is to take the camera and line it up and then rotate the tire and take shots at about every you know, 10 degrees or so uh, intervals and then change the position. So I'll start up high, I'll come lower, 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 lower. And once I get down really low, I'll actually have the camera pointing up into a little bit of the underside of the tire. Then I'm gonna flip the tire upside down, okay, 180 degrees, and I'm gonna start photographing from uh, a low to higher, higher, higher. This way I pretty much get full coverage all the way around the tire, and I should be able to get all the little uh, nooks and crannies in here, all the little blind spots. So that's the plan. Now, doing this technique, I've done videos on this before with smaller objects and using a lazy Susan or a small turntable. And they're a lot simpler to do because the objects are small, you can flip them. This one's a little bit heavier, a little bit harder to flip, but the concept is the same. And by using the camera and if I'm close enough, okay, where I just see the object and I sort of have like a rule of thirds and what I do is I like to divide the object up into like sort of three pieces and so I'm not looking to get shots of the overall. I mean I can but I actually want to get in and cut off about half or a third of it and if I can focus in on that part then I'm pretty good. As I rotate the tire, it's kind of a head fake. So the software thinks that the camera is actually moving around and not that the camera is stationary and that the wheel is turning this way. So that's what we want to happen, especially when we flip it. If we don't do this right, it'll break apart into two separate projects and I'll have to do the, you know, the sort of the outside part and then the inside part and then I can register the two together, which is possible. You can do that. But I don't want to do that. If it will do the work for me by tricking it out and getting the camera in nice and close, then I'm good with that. So we're going to get started right away. Uh, I'm going to take the camera, I'm going to line it up uh, up top here. I'm going to kind of get like a, a high shot kind of overall. I'm going to see if I can get inside of uh, these areas where the, uh, the bolts go in or the nuts and uh, cover that. And then I'm going to start off on this side here and I'm just going to take a bunch of photos rotate, 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 and then go from there. Um, just to save some time on the video, because this is going to take a long time, I may end up with, I don't know, I expect I'm going to have probably well over 300 photos or something like that. Um, I'll speed up the video in the areas where I'm just taking photos and not really doing anything interesting. Um, other than that, I think that's it. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything, but I say let's just get to it. I'm going to move this camera over and get started. And so for here, I've got this, move this tripod, and I'm nice, I'm up high, and all right, I've got live view on. I'm gonna go down like this, and let me see how close I can get. So I wanna get into the, yeah, where all, where all these are. And actually, I think I'm gonna go up a little bit higher, so I'm gonna just go a little bit more, and that will help me just get a different perspective, and then I'll slowly bring it down and I think that will be helpful. So, let's see, something like this. Okay, that looks pretty good. Nice and high, I'm looking at the overall view and try to get in nice and close so the tire doesn't hit. And I'm gonna try and drop this down a bit more, something like that, and go to the side a tiny bit more. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now, uh, in terms of equipment, what do I have? I've got a Nikon D7100, so that's a 24 megapixel camera, so when I take a shot, it's about 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. I have a Nikon 40 millimeter macro lens. It's an old lens that I've had kicking around and it does a really great job. Uh, I also have a very sturdy tripod. So one thing I don't want to do is when I hit the shutter button, I don't want it to be wobbling around. And I'm also on a very solid uh, ground or, or floor. These are tiles on a concrete floor. So this is not going to be wobbling or moving around. And in fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the remote. So there's a little remote that comes with the camera that came with this camera anyway. And I'm just going to wire it up so that all I got to do is just point it either at the camera, at the front or the back, and it will take the shots for me. So I've got the preview mode on and I need to make sure that the camera will, uh, or sorry, that the remote will work. It'll fire the, the camera. So I'm just going to go into the menu and it says uh, remote control, turn that on. All right. And I should be good. Let me go back to live view. All right, go down 
And let me just take a, a test shot and see what happens. You see, I have to point it at it. There it goes. So you heard it go. When live view is on, it takes a little bit longer. So I'm just going to look at the preview. And let me hit play. Okay, I'm looking at that. The exposure is right. It looks pretty good. Um, in terms of the settings, there's three things that I'm, I'm looking at. One is going to be the ISO. The other one is going to be the aperture. And then there's going to be the shutter speed, okay, or the length of time that I'm going to expose a shot. The ISO, I've got it right down to 100. Now, there's enough light in here and, you know, it's on a stable uh, tripod that if it needs a little bit more time, that's where the sacrifice will be. Okay, I'll let it go as long as it needs to get the proper exposure. In terms of aperture, now in a lot of my other videos, I've talked about increasing the f-stop number. Okay, so in increasing that number up to f-22, 32, or even going to the maximum, you increase your depth of field. And that's useful when you have small objects and you're getting in really, really close. But in this case, the scale of the object is a little bit larger. I'm not worried about depth of field. I'm not worried about losing focus um, or having a blurry image that's out of, uh, out of that range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something different today. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to use aperture mode on the camera and I'm going to put it to f8. So I'm going to lock it in at about f8 and then, you know, it'll expose whatever it needs. And the reason for that is many lenses or most lenses will have a, a setting where they are most sharp or most crisp. And there's formulas for it and stuff like that. And I'm going to try f8. It's usually about um, around f8, f5. It depends on the lens, f11, maybe something like that. But I'm going to try f8 and uh, see where that takes me. Uh, so I don't need to change it after. And I am in, I better make sure that I'm in aperture mode because I know I was messing with this before. Yeah, I'm in aperture mode. And so I can see that it's f8, it's ISOs uh, 100. And right now it's at 1 40th of a second. But of course, if I move it, Okay, it'll change a little bit. So I'll do something like this. Great. Okay, so I think I'm just going to start. Uh, actually, I'm going to erase that last photo. And just so I have a marker, it's actually, uh, let me do something else here. I'm going to go and I am going to, oh, let's go to file naming. And uh, I think I'm going to call this, uh, let's see, give it a, a tire. Uh, T, we'll do the uh, TYR for our friends over in the UK. Okay, very good. So that looks good. Oh, okay, I put TYS. That's not good. I guess I should have my glasses on. Uh, let's try it again. Uh, T, Y, and then let's go with R. There we go. Now we're good. All right, set it up. We're good. I'm good here. And so the file name is going to change. So I'll know which photos are which because there's probably a million photos on this card. And let's give this a go. I'm going to shut off the live view and it should go faster. There you go. So you heard it. It went pretty quick. I'm looking at a preview. I need to make sure that the exposure is right. Now that's my biggest sort of concern. That looks really good. I'm, I'm good with that. So go put this back. Go back to live view. Make sure I've got this covered. And yeah. I'm going to go right there and let's see, let's get going here. Shut off live view. Okay. This is the part where it gets really boring. I'm going to do one round here and I know that the nozzle is up on this end. So I'll, I'll start there, go away, uh, go around 360 degrees and I'll end up there again. So let's just get started. There we go. That's one. Let's rotate that. Now, why did that take longer? No, it looks okay. Again, oh, I got live view on again. Let's see. I'm going to make sure live view is off. There we go. Now it'll go faster. There we go. Rotate. There we go. I think it works better up here. It's in the direct line of sight. So just small increments, just so I can get all the, you know, little nooks and crannies. And, uh, you know, you could probably do about 12 or 16 photos. It really depends, um, you know, what you're looking for. I, I'm not going to be too crazy here with like detail and, um, you can get greater details by just going closer. That's definitely something you could do. And in fact, maybe at the end, 
uh, just to kind of finish things off. I may focus in on one area of the tire and get really close. And then when we build the 3D model, we'll be able to focus in on that area and you'll see the difference. I mean, you'll see the difference very clearly in terms of the geometry that's being reconstructed. You're just gonna have way more uh, crisp data in that area. It's not gonna look mushy. So let's see what we get here. We're doing one round. And I don't know, maybe about another five or 10 photos to go. All right. There we go. And we're almost there. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you to death with doing this over and over. So I'm just gonna play the video on high speed or I may just break and get into the other areas. I'm gonna start dropping this down. So I'm starting from up here. I'm gonna move it down a bit and I'm gonna tilt the camera a little bit more, get a different perspective, bring it down, 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 down. I'll take some, uh, a whole round where I'm gonna be face on with the tread and then there's gonna be another one where I'm actually a little bit below and I'm gonna try and catch the underside of the tire here and then um, I'm gonna flip it and then I'm gonna do the reverse. I'm gonna be starting low, uh, maybe up at an angle, uh, looking down this way on the other side and then slowly go up, up, up and I'll be getting the inside of the tire. Once I get all of that done, I'll focus in on one area. I'll get some high res shots and that's it. We're gonna go process them and make it work. So let me continue here and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so over here, I've got the camera starting to point a little bit upwards and I'm trying to catch a little piece of the bottom so that when I flip it, I've got this side of the tire and a little piece on the top that I can match together. So I'm gonna do another round of this and then I'm gonna flip the tire. Okay, time to flip. That's heavy. All right, I think it's good. Now, because I got this on the other side, I need to put the, bring the camera up and start getting up on this edge here. So this goes back up. Um, yeah, I think the last thing we'll do is that those detail shots that I talked about, but let's just continue on and try to get the best shots we can. Put that in there. And I definitely need to go higher than that, so maybe that's too high, we'll see. Like that. And then I wanna drop this down. Let's see. I don't wanna be too far off from what I had before, but I think I got this. I think I got this. Mm, yeah, I think that's gonna work. I think that's gonna work. Just let me go a bit down. Something like that. All right, I like that. 
tighten this up so it doesn't wobble it around. Okay, here we go once again. Continue on, so I'm gonna go from here. I'm gonna bring it up higher and then higher. I need to kind of point relatively straight down because I wanna get all the uh, text or all the, uh, you know, the, the rubber writing and stuff like that in detail. So if I'm on an angle, it's not gonna work out really well. I gotta kind of hit it uh, at perpendicular to the surface there. And then I wanna get the inside of the rim here too. So that's kind of what I'm going after. This is for the inside of the rim, so hopefully I'll get enough there, and then I'm going to do a couple over. Um, so yeah, there's still more to do. Okay, last thing is gonna to be to get some detail here. Now, there's actually some writing, and it's right over here, and it says, uh, replace, uh, replacement tire monitor. So I guess there's some engraving here. So once the engraving disappears, you, you, know, you replace the tire. So I wanna get this in detail. So that means I'm gonna drop this, and I'm gonna put it nice and close. And I'm just gonna do that little area because um, if I had to do the entire tread in high detail, it would take a really long time and a lot more photos. And I'm just interested in creating a nice uh, overall 3D model and get you guys the idea of how you could do this inside of 3DF Zephyr. And actually the technique that I'm using here, it doesn't matter what software you're using, it would pretty much end up the same thing. Um, for, you know, if you wanted like a free alternative or something, then you know you could use a different program like Meshroom or something like that. But uh, to be honest with you, this would work just fine the way it is. Let me focus in there a little bit. Okay, there we go. And in fact, uh, what I can do is I can even turn this sideways, put it up. I'll get more of the tire. Yeah, there we go. I just go like that. I think that looks pretty good. And let's give it a shot. I'm gonna start back this way a bit, and I'm just gonna do this little piece over here, and, well, let me see. Yep, looks good. I could go in a little bit closer. Uh, let me start, let me start like that, that'll be fine. Okay, let me take a shot, see what we get. Okay, looks good to me. I'm gonna take off the live view so we can go faster. Little bit of a move, picture, little bit of a move. There we go. Now, you'll be able to see this in the geometry right away. Because we're closer, we'll be able to tell that you'll get a lot of better geometry. So we'll see how that reconstructs. All right. Okay, that is it. So. Lots of photos, this uh, Nikon camera's working today pretty hard. So uh, I'm gonna take the SD card out. I'm gonna go process this on 3DF Zephyr and I'll record the whole thing. But again, I'm just gonna go over the, the very basic steps and then you'll see it come along and I'll be speeding up the video so that you understand uh, what the process is, but I'm not gonna waste your time. See you in a bit. Okay, so we're back at the computer and I've got all of the photographs uh, downloaded to the uh, computer. I got it in a file folder and we're gonna be processing all of those photos. So there's a lot. Uh, there are a total of uh, 460 photos. I'm just gonna drag them in here into 3DF Zephyr. Let me go next. 
These are all the photos. Yes, that's what we're going to do. It recognizes the camera and everything. So go next. And I'm just going to run the general and default. And the steps that we're going to be following here are going to be, we have to do the sparse reconstruction. So figuring out where all the camera positions are, orientation and that sort of thing. Then we're going to do the dense reconstruction. Then we're going to create a mesh and then we can create a textured mesh. Now in between, you're going to notice some things where I'm going to have some points that were from the, uh, the mount or from when it was sitting on the pivot, um, uh, like the little turntable thing, the chair. So, um, I may have to clean up some of those points. If I don't clean those up, then it's going to try and create points and meshes in areas where, well, I really don't want. So there's a couple ways I can tackle that. But, uh, for this particular video, um, I'm just going to do some quick cleanup on the point cloud because you could actually mask the images, but with 460 images, I don't feel like looking through them all and um, trying to figure out what the masks are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on next and run, and this is going to cook for a while. So I'm going to hit pause and then I'll come back when it's done. It may be about 10 minutes or so just because there's so many photos. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay. We're back. And that took about 10 minutes to process. You can see that, um, it's uh, giving me a window here with all of the images that have been reconstructed. And actually, there are some that didn't. So there's a few that got knocked out. And uh, it was probably my fault because some of them I was actually, as I was turning the tire, I hit the shutter before it would completely stop. So they could be blurred or they could be uh, just bad images or whatever. So I'm probably my fault. But for the most part, they're all together. So what I'm going to do is hit finish and let's have a look at what we've got here. Okay. So you can see all of the camera positions and they look like, you know, this, uh, a series of concentric circles. And that's what we want. So this right here, right off the bat, when you get a sparse reconstruction that's this dense, uh, looking at this tire here, that's a very good sign. And that usually tells you that if you go to the dense reconstruction, you're probably going to get a decent result. So there are a lot of feature matches uh, between the top and the bottom. And you can also see that I've gotten a lot of great um, uh, connection between the two. So I don't have to deal with this in two separate projects. I was able to trick the, alg the, the software into thinking that it's just the camera that's moving around the object. And it looks like everything came out really, really well. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to level this. Uh, well, I don't even need to do that. I don't really care. I, I'll, the video is probably long enough. So I'll just continue on with the dense reconstruction. So I'm going to work workflow, advanced, dense. Again, I'm just going to choose the defaults, nothing special, general default, go next, and I'm going to go run, let this cook again, and I'll be back uh, in a few minutes when it's done. Okay, so the uh, dense point cloud is done, and that took uh, took about half an hour. That was quite a bit of time. I'm going to finish here, and now you can see what it is that we have. So not too bad, not too shabby. All right, we got a pretty good looking tire. It's really coming along. All right, pretty good, pretty good. Now you'll notice that on the this side right here, I've got these black. Uh, pieces that are here. So I would normally edit these out. And the reason is uh, when it was flipped over onto the uh, the chair or the stool, that there was a, a black cloth that was here. So it's actually reconstructing part of the black cloth. So we could probably do something to clean that up if we wanted. So I could go in and then, you know, start making some edits and things like that. But I don't know if we should. Maybe we will. Um, maybe what I'll do is just uh, offline. Um, I won't do it... Uh, online. I'm just going to go ahead and repair this, clean some of this up because I don't want it to build a mesh when I, which is the next step for these uh, straight points here. So let me hit pause. I'm going to clean this up and then I'll come back and then we'll run the uh, mesh extraction. Okay. So I'm back and I've cleaned up the tire here. So you can see uh, um, the black parts that were here are pretty much gone. Um, there's a few little things that I should probably clean up a bit better, but I think for the purposes of what we're doing, it should be fine. Um, actually, I just see a little one right here and I'll show you what exactly what I'm doing. But as I move around here, there's a little bit, you can see a few points right here, floating points. So I'm just going to move this way. They're a little hard to see because they are black. So I'm going to rotate around this way. And then in this little space that's here, I'm going to make a selection. So I'm just going to go make a poly selection. And just so I can be really particular about where I'm picking and that I don't pick any good points, I'm just going to pick in this black space. And I just see a few straight points that were picked over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this, hit delete. And basically, if you go over and over and over and do that, uh, it'll wipe up uh, or wipe out these points here. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. 
Next step is going to be the mesh extraction. So what I want to do is go workflow, advanced, and then mesh extraction. Go next and general default. So I'm not going to go into high details because it would take a lot longer to do. I'm just go ahead and run. Let's let this cook. Then we'll get the mesh. And then the final step is going to be to create the texture for the mesh. But uh, already when we get the mesh, we'll be able to tell what areas we did really well and what areas we didn't do so well. So we'll be back in a bit. Okay, so we've got a mesh now that's been created here. And so you can see, um, remember that the colors that we're seeing here are not really uh, really good textures, but it's looking pretty good. I would say this looks pretty good. Let me rotate it around. Okay, now textures always trick your eyes. So the thing that you want to do is you want to shut off the textures and then just have a look at the mesh itself because that will really uh, show you where there are inconsistencies and stuff. So there you go. So here, if we start getting in, you can see that we got some no, nah, not bad. I mean, the tread pattern. Uh, again, if I had gotten closer, I would have a, a better result. But there was one area of the tire. I can see where the writing is there, but I think it might have been another area. Let's just have a look and see if that's what it was. Okay, here I can see the writing. All right, uh, so I'll just have to find that. But what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to look for the... Um, I'm going to try to get the textures on here because I think that'll be interesting. So let's go ahead and do that, get the final textures. The mesh doesn't look too bad. And uh, let me go back here, get the light off. And here we go. There's a texture. So let's do the textures and see what this looks like in the end. And again, uh, we can do a pretty simple one. We don't have to do a multi-texture. I mean, obviously, you can get a better resolution. I'm going to go back to the presets, general, and default single texture. You can do multi-texture and really high details, but for the purposes of what we're doing, default single texture. I'm going to go next, run, and again, uh, stand by, and we'll be right back. Okay, so the moment of truth is here. Let's see what the heck we got. The texture is finished. And you can see we've got a pretty good looking model here. I'm going to shut off these cameras so we can just inspect the, yeah, the images here. I think I, oh, I got meshes on. Let me, uh, the wireframe is on. Let me shut that off. There we go. Okay. So there you go. Uh, that's a textured model. Now, usually when I see this, there we go. That's where we're getting a little bit more detail. Uh, now that may not have translated through in the mesh. So if I go like this, uh, we can start to see some of the lettering here. If I'd gotten a little bit closer, I think I probably would have had a better result. But if you look at the tread, it's not too bad. It's fairly clean. Again, um, if I had added a few more uh, images, gotten closer, I would have had a slightly better result. But as you can see, I think I'm going to call this one a success. Uh, I think it worked. Uh, ultimately, what I really wanted to do was be able to take the tire and get the um, outside of the tire and the inside part of the tire together. It looks like I'm successful at doing that. Um, I've got all the little details, like the little stones and things that are locked up in here. And yeah, hey, look, I'm pretty happy about that. I hope that, uh, you know, you guys think that this is a fairly decent result. Uh, it did take a lot of photos, took a lot of time. But again, with a bit of patience, you know, taking good photographs, making sure you got good lighting, treating the object a little bit with, uh, you know, a little bit of powder or some kind of a spray just to give you a little bit of uh, light and less reflection. Uh, that had helped for sure. So, um, hey, look. We'll uh, see you next time on Click3D. If you have any comments, go ahead and put them down in the uh, just below the video there. And we'll see you soon, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.